about a half a million years ago or somewhat more, sheep crossed the, the Bering Land Bridge to North America and were the progenitors of our North American sheep. And, and there, in the last glaciation, they were separated into two populations, the doll sheep and the bighorn sheep in the southern part. The Sierra bighorn sheep is a unique subspecies, distinct from the Rocky Mountain and desert bighorns. It now clings to existence here in the Sierras, its numbers plummeting during the last century. We started out with something in the neighborhood of 17 or more herds of sheep scattered along the Sierra Nevada from Sonora Pass south. And by the 1970s, we were down to three. We started seeing very high mountain lion predation levels in the 1980s and watched the sheep in the Sierra start avoiding winter ranges where this predation was happening. And in the late 80s, I watched as the sheep basically quit using those winter ranges and started living year-round at the tops of the mountains. And we watched the populations drop to rather low numbers. These are ecosystem changes that have come about, and just why they've happened is not entirely clear, but it could very well have to do with manipulations that modern humans have done in these ecosystems. The sheep have changed the eons-old patterns of their natural history. What has changed that brought mountain lions into the sheep's historical ranges? What is different in this ecosystem? To answer this question, we must understand what this ecosystem was like in the past. But how do we look back in time? And what do we find? Since the 1970s, archaeologist Robert Bettinger has literally dug into the human past in the White Mountains attempting to understand the spread of culture in Western North America. From his many field studies based at the station, he has recovered evidence of what the ancient hunter-gatherers took from this environment for food and raw materials. This allows him to reconstruct the history of this ecosystem and provide biologists and ecologists a look into the past. Amidst the sagebrush steppe, Robert and a group of students explored the faint remnants of an ancient highland hunting camp and paused to reflect on how the lives of those who once lived here tell us about what this ecosystem was once like and how it has changed. It is widely uh, perceived in the public, I think, that, that hunting, first of all, is the most important thing that Native Americans do. And second, when the hunting is done, that it's primarily targeted at deer. And what we really see uh, in these villages here in the highlands is first that gathering's just as important, and second, that deer aren't involved at all. And uh, uh, the real critical prey species up here, which dominates almost to the exclusion of all other large animals in the archeological record is, is, is the mountain sheep. And it was so uh, from the very beginning of the record, uh, right up until what we call the historic period when when Euro-Americans come into Eastern California. So the reasonable question to ask is, is what, what's the difference? The environment that they relied on, this alpine environment, changed from one that favored mountain sheep in the past, which was grass, to, uh, to sagebrush. And look where we are in the middle of a sagebrush meadow, and which is perfectly suited to deer, ideal for deer, but absolutely unsuited to uh, mountain sheep. So what would it look like if, if, if you came up here 250 years ago? Um, and the answer is that it, it wouldn't look like what we see today at all. Instead of sagebrush, what we would see is, is rolling fields of grass. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be continuous grass. It wouldn't look like the, it wouldn't like Kansas, but it's bunch grasses and it would be all over here, taller and shorter and, and pretty much continuous. But what could have caused such a dramatic change? a change that saw one ecosystem of plants entirely replaced by another. Was it drastic climate change, an invasive disease, or plague of insects? It was something more devastating. 
in a word, it's grazing. It's grazing animals. It's cows um, and sheep that come up here and take the really prime uh, pasture uh, that the mountain sheep had depended on, the, the herbs, the grasses that were here, uh, and strip those off uh, and caused the, the sagebrush to, to flourish in, the, in their stead and basically transformed a grassland to a sagebrush, to a sagebrush steppe. And it stretches from Owens Valley all the way east to the far rim of the Great Basin. It's a, it's a change we see everywhere in the mountain ranges of the Great Basin where the, sh the grazing by sheep removes grass, causes a replacement of, of bighorn sheep by deer. Mountain lions are really primarily dependent on deer. Without deer, no mountain lions. They are also a part of this introduction, deer and uh, and mountain lions together, which are making a change in the environment. With domestic livestock eating their way through the landscape, a cascade of changes has transformed this ecosystem forever. Thus, we will never again see herds of bighorn dominating the mountains that for untold millennia have been their home. Their forage is gone and predators have been invited into their range. They will forever cling to existence, while we must face the task of protecting them.